Hi again guys, Melissa here and in today's video I'll be showing you this ASUS Tough Gaming K7 Optical Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. So uh, this keyboard does come in at a rough price point of £129.99 and I was very interested to check this one out for the fact that it does have optical mechanical switches instead of your usual like, Cherry MX switches or anything like that. So uh, definitely interested to try this out, so let's get it unboxed and have a look. It has a non-detachable USB 2.0, 1.8 meter flexible rubber cable. The wrist rest itself is 439 millimeters by 77 millimeters by 18 millimeters and weighs 194 grams. Keyboard dimensions without the wrist rest come in at 439 millimeters in length by 131 millimeters in width by 37 millimeters in height and has a total weight of 794 grams. First of all, it is a full-size keyboard and it does feature the black floating keycaps on an aircraft grade aluminium chassis. It has a compact frameless design to it, which in my opinion makes it look a lot more cleaner and a lot more professional and generally just takes away any unnecessary bulk that a lot of keyboards have when it comes to their frames and it means that you're going to have a lot more desk space. It does feel very premium and durable, which given the tough branding you would definitely expect this. It does have an IP56 rating for water and dust resistance as well, which should give you confidence knowing that your keyboard is going to last through like heavy gaming sessions or potentially any accidental spillages as well. Unfortunately, there is no dedicated onboard media controls. Um, however, you can have access to the media controls via the FN key. So it's not the end of the world. You still do have those media controls. They're just not dedicated keys. Um, and you also have a macro record button, a brightness key, and you also have a Windows lock key as well. So you do have some extra features, just unfortunately not the onboard dedicated media controls. It also has adjustable stands either side underneath of the keyboard to help with better positioning and extra comfort. And then unfortunately for myself and any other people out there that enjoy having USB pass-throughs on their keyboards, um, this one does not have one. Moving on to probably my most favorite feature when it comes to this keyboard uh, would be the wrist rest. So it's an ergonomic leathery memory foam wrist rest and it attaches via magnets. So you can actually go ahead and attach it and detach it super easily. The wrist rest itself does feel super comfortable when you're using it, for, especially for long periods of time, um, which I really do like memory foam, uh, like plush wrist rest. I always have done. I don't like the uh, kind of rubber plastic wrist rests they just they feel bad and over time they really do start to hurt on your wrists um, but definitely the memory foam plush ones are super comfortable and I absolutely loved this one in terms of the keys like I mentioned before it does feature the floating keycap design this is to help make it easier when you need to clean out any crumbs or hairs or dust or anything from underneath the keycaps the switch type that this specific keyboard has um, is the tactile optimech switch um, and is available in the linear Optimex Switch 2. These OptiMechanical switches are different because instead of using pieces of metal inside to actuate a key press, these OptiMex switches, when pressed, actually break an infrared light beam, giving you near enough instant actuation. When it comes to the response time for a normal mechanical switch, um, this is around 5 milliseconds. However, on the OptiMechanical switches, it's around 0.2 milliseconds. So, in my opinion, the OptiMech switches are going to be great for competitive gameplay, esports players, and such. Now, I'm going to show you the loudness of these key switches.
As you heard, the uh, key presses are quite loud, and in my opinion, I'm not a big lover of loud keyboards, um, click clack tile switches or anything like that, because they are too noisy. I'm on Discord quite a lot, I stream um, a lot as well, and to be honest, I don't want my friends or like, viewers or anything like that to know um, when I'm typing an essay. I don't want them to, to be able to hear it or anything like that, because I don't want to put them off being in there. And I'm a touch typist as well, so I can type really fast, so if I'm just writing out an essay, it just sounds like I'm angry typing to somebody. Um, so personally, I'm not a big fan of loud keyboards. With the performance of the Optimechanical Mechanical Switches, this is where they definitely did take centre stage, especially when it comes to the um, accuracy and the responsiveness that they had. I type quite fast, like I've mentioned, so sometimes a lot of key presses could be missed with certain keyboards. Um, but this one actually managed to pick up everything that I was pressing without a lot of effort, so that was really good. The keys themselves, in my opinion, are in good locations. I didn't feel that at any point I was overstretching my fingers or getting finger strain or anything from reaching certain keys on the keyboard. Everything that I needed was in the vicinity of where my hands were, uh, which was really good. It gave for a very comfortable experience, and obviously with the help of the wrist rest as well, Gaming for long periods of time, working for long periods of time, it definitely was very, very comfortable. Now onto the RGB. It does feature three onboard profiles and does have per key RGB LED backlighting. And this can be fully customized through the ROG Armory software. Um, however, you can actually change the lighting effects through the keyboard itself and like the brightness and whatnot, or through the FN key. It's not as kind of jazzy and personalized as it would be if you were to use the ROG software, um, but you can actually go ahead and choose whichever one you want to use, basically. The ROG Armory software allows for you to control macros, lighting effects, LED brightness and speed, and you can also use Aura Sync as well. And in my opinion, a really, really quirky feature is the ability to see the keyboard stats. So you can use this to check keys and to see how much use they've actually had. Overall, I am impressed with the design, its premium quality and durability that it has. Um, obviously the extra features there being that it's got the IP56 rating. Personally, I haven't gone ahead and thrown coffee on it to test this out, but obviously it is there for a reason. I do love the memory foam wrist rest. I think that's a great addition, it's super comfortable and you know that you're not going to get any like wrist sores or anything like that, so that's great. And then obviously the performance of the Opti Mechanical Switches. With this being my first time using them, I'm definitely impressed with them. It is a shame about it not having a braided cable. In my opinion, the tough branding is about being tough and durable, um, but they've got this flexi rubber cable and I don't know, it's just a bit meh in my opinion. I feel like they could have gone that extra mile and added a braided cable so that the cable itself was tough and the keyboard itself was tough. So I feel like they've missed something there. And again, for me, not having USB pass-through, I really do like them. I use them quite a lot, but I know some people out there don't. It's not the be all end all for everybody, but for myself, I do like USB pass-throughs. That's it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure to go ahead and do so. And make sure you turn on your notifications so that you guys can see when our new videos go live. Thank you very much, guys. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.